Grade Elevens and welcome back to another Victors video with me, Miss Martins. If you've missed the previous ones, I will link the playlist down in the description box. Remember to subscribe for more physics videos. But today what we'll be focusing on, that is objects in equilibria and closed vector diagrams. A very important part of vectors, very important skills that you need to know. And stick around because I will be sharing some teacher tips towards the end of the video. These things will help you go from a 50 to a 60, a 60 to a 70, 70 to a 80, you know, level up your marks. Let's jump right in. What is a closed vector diagram? When do we use it? And what do you mean by forces or objects in equilibrium? The first thing that you need to know is an object is in equilibrium if it is stationary, in other words, standing still, or moving at a constant velocity. What's important between those two scenarios, stationary and moving at a constant velocity, is that acceleration is zero. So if you're not moving, your acceleration is zero, okay? Your velocity is zero. If you're moving at a constant velocity, if VF is the same as VI, your acceleration is zero. And that means F net is zero. So the very, very most important thing that you need to know is when dealing with objects in equilibrium or forces in equilibrium, what that means is that the net force acting at that point or on that object is zero. That's super important if net is zero. And we can see different scenarios or situations that look like these ones behind me. You'll get these in the test or the exam. They'll say things like the box is in equilibrium or the box is stationary or the forces acting on the box or in, are in equilibrium. And they can ask you a whole variety of questions. So for example, they could ask you for the value of the tension force or they could ask you to work out the mass of the bag, things like that. Now, what's important for you to notice, so let's take this example over here. If you look at this box, this box is suspended from the ceiling. It's got a rope attached to it over here. Apparently, there's a force acting to the box, pulling it to the right. And we've got the weight of the box, which is a force pulling it downwards. If the situation or if this object is in equilibrium, if the forces are, or are in equilibrium, if they tell you F net is equal to zero, all these vectors, these three vectors, so the tension vector acting in the rope, the applied force vector, which is this one over here, and the weight vector, which is the one going straight down. If you take those three vectors and you rearrange them, so keep them going in the correct direction. If you rearrange them, okay, you will form a closed vector diagram, which is a triangle. And what is so important to notice about this triangle is that every single corner of the triangle has the head of the vector touching the tail of the next. So let's take a look at that behind me over here. So take a look at this diagram. What's important to notice, you can do it in any, um, any way, situation number one or number two. The important thing that I want you to notice is that the head of one vector touches the tail of the next. The head of one vector touches the tail of the next. The head of this vector touches the tail of the next. It's so important to notice that there are no head to head connections or tail to tail connections. And that is not true from the previous videos that we've looked at. That is not true when we've had a resultant vector. So in this situation over here, there is no resultant vector. So no F net or resultant vector. And why are there no resultant vectors? Well, because remember, we said that F net is zero. The object is either stationary or moving at a constant velocity. It's in equilibrium. So let's just take a look at these two situations that you may have seen already. For the situation on the right, this is what we have been doing already in this section. We've been doing objects that are not in equilibrium. There is a net or resultant force. And when we've done our, our vector diagram, one of the vectors is a resultant. So this is, for example, someone pushes a box with three newton to the right. Someone pushes the same box with four newton down. Let's say those vectors are 90 degrees to one another. The resultant goes from the tail of the first to the head of the last and take note of what's happening here we have a head to head connection we have a tail to tail connection so this represents not a closed vector diagram so this is not a closed vector diagram and that is because over here we do have a resultant force the one that i've colored in green that is my resultant force so we have head touching head tail touching tail 
On the left, however, we have a situation where the object is in equilibrium and there are no net forces. We form a closed vector triangle. Every corner of the triangle, we have a head touching a tail, a head touching a tail, a head touching a tail. Neither of these three um, forces are a resultant force. They are each their own force. So you can see over here, this is the tension force over there. This over here is my weight vector. It's pointing straight down. Take a look at which way the vectors are pointing. And this one over here is my force vector pointing to the right. So none of these are a resultant force. I hope you can see the difference. Now, how did I get that triangle? Because I know a lot of my students struggle with, but ma'am, and they said to me, but ma'am, how did you get that triangle? How do you know which way the, 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 the arrows must point? How did you do it? So I'm going to show you how to do it. And I'm also going to show you how to include the angles. If you take a look at the situation over here, we've got a box suspended by a rope. There are three forces acting on this box. As I have mentioned, we've got this force over here. Think about which way this box is being pulled. We've got this way over here. And we've got a force acting this way over here. So three forces. The easiest force to represent in a vector diagram is the weight vector or the weight force, the gravitational force. That's acting straight down. So I can draw that acting straight down. Remember to always label, please. So this is W or you can call it FG. I don't mind. Your teachers don't mind which one you call it. You can call it either. So that's the blue vector. It's acting straight down. Weight will always act straight down. What about the applied force? So I know they call it F, but you can also call it force applied. It's a force that we are applying to the box. Which way are we putting the box? We're pulling the box to the right. Do you see which way that arrow is pointing? To the right. So which way do I draw that vector? Well, I draw it pointing to the right. I cannot draw it here though. I cannot draw it here because we know that because this object is in equilibrium, F net is zero, it should form a closed vector diagram, which means I cannot have tail to tail touching. So I can't draw it up there. I need to draw it over here. That I'm going to call F. And that is the green vector. That is my applied force vector pointing to the right. Then my last vector, because I know it has to be a closed vector diagram, my head um, my um, head of this must touch a tail and my, my tail over here must touch a head. I know already that my vector has to go like this. But does it make sense according to the picture? So what I'm telling you now is that the vector I just drew in over there, that's the yellow vector, this one here on the picture. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. Because look at the way in which that vector is pulling that box. So that box is being pulled up and to the left. It's being pulled up and to the left like this. Up and to the left. Think about how that string is holding that box. It is pulling up and to the left. So there's my force. It's going up and to the left. And I'm going to call this T. Now, when we have a string or a rope or something, there will be a tension force in that um, string. So we call it T, T for tension, tension is a force. Now, let's fill in my angles. Before I fill in my angles, I just want to show you that you could have drawn your vector in a slightly different way. You could have started with my tension vector going straight and up like that, up and to the left. Then you could have done your force vector, your F applied, which will go to the right. Oh, I drew it a bit long. So that's my tension. Then you could have done force applied like that. And then you could have done weight. Do you see how it's the same thing? Take a look. Tension is going up and to the left. In this one, tension is going up and to the left. In this one, F is going to the right. In this one, F is going to the right. So let's label this. In this one, weight is going down. In this one, weight is going down. And take a look, it is a closed vector diagram because we've got head to tail, head to tail, head to tail. So it's correct. Now, we need to fill in angles. How we fill in angles is as follows. Can you see that my weight vector is going straight down and my applied, my force applied vector or F, the green one is going to the right straight to the right like that. So this is going along the y-axis, this is going along the x-axis. What angle does that make? 90 degrees. 
So between the weight vector and the if applied vector, I need a 90 degree angle. So that means if I did it this way, I would need a 90 degree angle. Then pay careful attention to the following. Look at the angle that they give you. So they tell me, or we know that tension is going up and to the left like this. Imagine if I had to draw an arrowhead in there, it would be going like that. And we know that the angle over here is 60. So what that means is in this diagram, this angle over here would be 60, which means that this angle over here is not 60. If this is 60, what is this angle over here? It would be 30. How did I know that? Because 60 plus 30 must give me 90. So just remember the angle on top of the tension. So when I say on top of tension, I mean tension's arrowhead is going up and to the left. On top of here, it's 60. Below is 30. So this angle here is below, it's 30. If that's 90 and that's 30, this one must be 60. The reason why is because the angles in a triangle, the sum of the angles in a triangle equals 180 degrees. If we do this triangle over here, we can see over here that tension is going up and to the left like that, okay? Tension's going up and to the left and the angle kind of above it over there as you can see on the diagram, is 60. So that over there would be 60, and that would be a 30. So just make sure you draw your angles incorrectly. It's super important to know where and how to label the angles, because if you label them incorrectly, you're going to do the wrong calculations to figure out the magnitudes. Another way you can think of it is if we have tension going up like this, if I have to complete this triangle, if this one is 60 over here, that angle over here is 60. If that is 90, then this one over here must be 30. Basically, I'm looking at this as a little triangle. So then just consider where the angle is over here in your triangle. Okay, cool. So drawing the closed vector diagram or the closed triangle is super important because what we would do in the next question is they could ask me to find the value of, let's say, for example, T or find the value of F, the magnitude or the force. So just take note that this is basically called the triangle rule, and that's used for forces that are in equilibrium. And the triangle is closed because the three forces are in equilibrium. And like I said, the resultant or the F net or the net vector is zero. Okay, it's always head to tail method. Now let's actually do an example. This is the exact same example that I was just doing, except here they're actually asking me a question. So what they're telling me is they give me a weight of 30 Newton. So what I know so far is that the magnitude of weight, this is the weight, or you can call it FG. We know that it's 30 Newton. Same angles, this is the same question. Remember, this is tension, this is friction. They want us to determine the tension as well as the horizontal force. So how do I do this? Well, I need to use one of these triangles. It doesn't matter which one you use. Either one will give you the same answer. I'm going to use the first triangle, the one on the left, for the sake of this video. And if you want to try it out with this triangle, the one right over here on the right, you can try, you'll get the same answer. So remember, they give me the magnitude of the weight. I know that the weight is 30 Newton. They want me to find T and they want me to find F. So if you look at the triangle that I just have now, we just drew this triangle. I just uh, filled in the angles with you guys. So I know the weight W or FG, which is weight. I know that that is 30 Newton. So I know that this arrow over here has a magnitude of 30 Newton. And they want me to find T, they want me to find F. Because this is a 90 degree triangle, we have the magnitude of one of the sides or the length of one of the sides and we have the angles. You should know that we can use trigonometry. So let's start off with finding T. So let's find tension first. Now, what you can do in order to find T is the follows, is as follows. So we can use either the 60 degrees or we can use the 30 degree angle. Just choose one. Let's do the 60 degree angle. Look at the 60 degree angle, grade 11s. Now, look at what we have. We have the weight. Where is the weight in comparison to the 60 degree angle? The weight is opposite the 60 degree angle. So look at the weight. 
the weight is opposite the 60 degree angle. In terms of trig, when I say opposite, what do you think of? I hope you think of sine or sin. So sin of 60, what is sin equal to? Sin is equal to, let me just write it up here for you if you forgot, sin of an angle is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. It's opposite over hypotenuse. Sin of 60, so what's opposite 60? My weight. What is my weight? 30 newton, okay? Divided by, now what is my hypotenuse of this triangle? I hope you remember that the hypotenuse is always opposite the 90 degrees. So here's the 90. What's opposite the 90? T. So how do I solve for T? Now this is another thing where my students tend to go wrong. So I hope you're listening to me now. If you're solving for a variable, and the variable, my variable is T. Remember, you don't have to put the Newton in here. That's not a variable. That's a unit. T is my variable, and it's at the bottom of a fraction. In order to solve for a variable that's at the bottom of the fraction, what we do is this and this can swap places. So what I mean is t is equal to 30 divided by sine 60. So let's do that quickly. I get 34,64 Newton. Now let's just focus on determining the magnitude. So the question said determine the tension and the horizontal force. So if that was the question, you actually have to give me a direction. If they said determine the magnitude, then you would just say this. But they actually want a tension, which means we need to give a direction. So if they want the direction, remember you could say, look at what, what tension is doing. If I had to draw a Cartesian plane, north, east, south, west, look at tension. Tension is going up and to the left. So tension's there going up and to the left. This angle here is 60. So you could say 60 degrees north of west. Okay. Okay something like that. But the focus for today's video is I don't want you to worry about direction. If you want videos on how to state the direction of vectors, I will link my playlist in the description box below. But the focus for this video is how did I get T? How did I get 34,64? So I hope that makes sense. If we use the 60 degree angle and I'm looking for T, I know T is the hypotenuse. And I know that if I use the 60 degree angle, I know the weight, which is opposite. So I'm going to use sine. Another way to find T is we could have decided to use the 30 degree angle. But now look at the 30 degree angle. Okay. T is what I'm looking for. It's still the hypotenuse. Okay. But look at the 30 degree angle. The length of the side that I have is next to the 30 degree angle. Remember, I have the weight, which is 30 newtons. It's next to or adjacent to the 30 degree. Now what trig ratio do you know that uses adjacent? I hope you're saying cos. Cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So we would have to use cos if I use the 30 degree angle. So we would say cos of 30 is equal to, remember cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent is the 30 degrees, the sorry, the 30 newton and the hypotenuse is tension. Okay, so cos of the 30 degree angle is equal to the 30 newton. Remember, our weight is 30 newton. Yep, it is 30 newton divided by my hypotenuse, which is T. And again, because my variable is at the bottom of the fraction, the tension and this thing over here switch places. So we've got 30 divided by cos 30. If you work that out on your calculator, you will get the exact same answer, 34,64. For Newton. So we can find tension. We can use 30 degrees. We can use 60 degrees. Just please be aware of which trig ratio you will use. And it's dependent on which angle you use. You need to look at what you're looking for. So we're looking for the hypotenuse and we are given either the opposite or the adjacent, depending on which angle you use. With that being said, see if you can try and find F. So we just found T. See if you can find F. And before you do that, a lot of my students say to me, ma'am, we now know that T is 34,64 Newton. Can't I just do Pythagoras to find F? Because think about it. We know the 30 Newton and we know the 34,64 Newton. We know two sides of a triangle. It's a right angle triangle, so we can do Pythagoras, right? It's not wrong if you do Pythagoras, but you need to keep a few things in mind. You may have made a mistake when finding T. And therefore, if you use the wrong T, you're going to get the wrong F if you do Pythagoras. That's the first thing. 
And the second thing is, if you do Pythagoras, you cannot use the rounded off version here. So you need to keep the full version of t if you want to do Pythagoras. So I'm just going to do normal trig. I want you to try and do normal trig with me. Let's do it. So what I'm doing now is I'm trying to find f. So let's find f. And I'm going to again use um, do it using both of the angles over here. So say you decide you want to use the 30 degrees. Now take a look. If I use the 30 degrees, f is opposite the 30 degrees. Okay, so we know we're going to work with opposites. But what do I know? I don't know the hypotenuse in this case. Well, let's pretend I don't know tension yet. Let's pretend I don't know tension. I don't know the hypotenuse in this case, but I do know the adjacent. The adjacent is 30 Newton. So what uses opposites and adjacents? Opposite over adjacent. Yep, tan. So I can go tan... 30, remember I'm using the 30, tan is opposite over adjacent. What's opposite the 30? F is opposite the 30. What is adjacent to the 30? 30 Newton. So how do you work this out? This is divide by 30. When you take the 30 over, it's going to become times by 30. So I take the 30 over, it becomes 30, multiplied by tan 30, I get 17,32 Newton. And remember, they just wanted the force. So you need to say to the right, they didn't ask for magnitude. If they ask for magnitude, you don't have to give me direction. Okay, what if I decided I wanted to use the 60 degrees instead? So remember, I just did it using the 30 degrees. What if I want to use the 60 degrees? Well, again, you have to think about what you are given, so what you know and what you're looking for. So we are trying to find F, we're using the 60 degrees, and we know the weight. So we know the weight, which is opposite, and we're looking for F, which is adjacent to the 60 degrees. So again, I'm using opposite over adjacent. So I'm using tan of 60. So because remember, tan uses opposite over adjacent. So what is opposite the 60? The 30 Newton. Okay, do you see that? Opposite the 60 is the 30 Newton, and adjacent to the 60 is F. Remember what I showed you guys? What do I do if my variable's at the bottom? It swaps places, so 30 divided by tan 60. And if you use your calculator to work out what that is equal to, you will get the exact same answer, 17,32 Newton. And remember, they asked for the force, not for the magnitude, so they need direction, so you have to say to the right. Now again, grade 11s, a lot of my students will ask me, ma'am, you use tan over here, can't we use cos? Can't we use sine? Because we have the hypotenuse, remember the hypotenuse is t, and we just figured that out. Yes, you can, but remember my two things that I told you. If you made a mistake getting t, then you're going to use the wrong hypotenuse over here. And if you want to use the hypotenuse, 34,64. So if you want to use that in the next question, 34,64, please don't round that off. Use the full version. In the next video, what we will do is we will go over some more questions, some more exam level questions, but you need to make sure you understand these basics first. So try this question again without looking at the answers and see if you can get to the correct answer. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.